Hi, my name is Mr. Powers and uh, I decided I would give you an opportunity to watch my uh, back to school night presentation um, in case you can't make it to the classroom itself. Um, so I just want to introduce myself to you guys, let you guys know a little bit about who I am and uh, why I teach and uh, what it is that uh, motivates me so you can see uh, a little bit about my personality and who your kids are going to be spending each and every day with. So um, why I teach? Well, my grandfather, uh, when he passed away, um, I, I kind of had this like revelation um, that a lot of the stuff that I was doing, a lot of the things that um, was a part of who I was, was actually him. Like he was still living in me. He wasn't dead in terms of like his actions were still a part of my actions because he had taught me things and then I was doing those things. Um, and I realized that a man's life is not his own who lives it serving or loving others. Like if I pour myself into other people, then I live on. <laughs> um, and so my goal is to just pour myself into your kids. I just want to um, have them have great experiences with science. Um, I want them to have great experiences learning about life, um, being loved by others, and learning how to love others. Um, and I think that happens in each and every day types of interactions in the classroom. Um, the way that we treat each other with respect and kindness. Um, is something that we can continue to do th for the rest of our lives. So that's why I teach, uh, because I want to make a positive impact in uh, your kids' lives. Um, what I teach is science, and I am lucky. I get to teach the best subject because we get to have tons of fun. Uh, we get to do demonstrations, we get to do experiments, and uh, there's nothing better than doing a little bit of science. Um, and one of the things that I like to do is I like to encourage people to learn about science through some history. So a lot of times I tell the stories behind the scientists that have discovered certain things or helped us understand certain things. And it's a lot more fun to understand science when you get to understand the story behind it, the people that are behind it. So I oftentimes will tell a little bit of a history lesson as well with some of my scientists and some of my scientific concepts and the kids love that and I love it. Uh, makes it a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so I teach truth, I teach responsibility. Um, and basically, I teach science. Remember that science is this quest for truth, right? Science is something where we don't say that we know the answers to everything, but we are going to search out the answer. So uh, what I want to do is I want to teach the kids to explore life, to try to ask questions, um, to not go at something with the automatic assumption that they know, but to have an open mind so that they can use scientific evidence to support uh, ideas, um, and in this case, to support whatever that truth is. Um, I'd want them to think on their own and uh, not to just be able to um, take whatever <laughs> impact is coming from whoever's uh, around them. I want them to um, be able to think critically and to act in the best interests of their fellow human beings. Um, I believe that it's our job as humans to be stewards of this world, that we need to take care of it. So I want to teach your kids why it's important to take care of it and what they can do to take care of it better. Um, that will ha happen through both physical science and in uh, chemistry. Uh, science can teach us how to do a better job at taking care of our world and being good stewards. How do I teach? Well, hopefully I'm teaching with some energy. Hopefully I'm teaching with some excitement, uh, some enthusiasm, like Tigger, a uh, little bouncy, bouncy, trouncy, trouncy, fun, 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 fun. I want the kids to have a good experience in science. Um, I want to keep them engaged. If you're falling asleep in my class, I am not doing a good job. So I hope that they're staying engaged and I hope they enjoy the subject. Even though science can be tough for some kids, I hope that they all find it is a wonderful thing to study. Um, so I'm going to be teaching out of Modern Chemistries, um, Holt Douglas Modern Chemistry, and um, they'll get to learn from that if they're a chemistry student. They'll have an online version of the book that they can access as well. And then for physical science, I'm teaching from Holt Physical Science, and in this class, um, they're learning about physics and chemistry primarily. Um, in this particular text, there's a tiny little bit of earth science and a tiny little bit of astronomy, and uh, it's pretty cool to be able to touch on those things. But uh, the big emphasis is for First semester chemistry, second semester physics. Um, yeah, so a lot of fun. Hi there. Okay, so 
Um, I made that video this last summer, and now we've got the new hybrid model coming out. So we have the back to school hybrid addendum. Okay, so we're going to go over just a couple things that are going to be a little bit different in the hybrid model versus, you know, just being in a remote model or just being in a regular in seat model, right, in the class model. So um, just kind of pay uh, a little attention here as we go through this. I know uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about as we go. So, number one, in the technology aspect in class versus out of class. In class, I want them to have their uh, laptops and or Chromebooks or tablets here uh, with some headphones, with a mic capability. That way that the in-class students can interact with the remote students if we want to put them in groups and things like that. Um, in class, I'll be able to give them support to figure out how things are going. When they're at home, and this is including in the remote model that we're at right now, I really don't have very much ability to help somebody troubleshoot things. Now, I will definitely try when I can help somebody. I will try to do so. But uh, the emphasis is on you guys at home being able to solve your own problems with technology. Um, we are not, as teachers, tech support people, uh, you know, to start with. So, and then we are having a lot of trouble on our own with our tech problems. So, um, unfortunately, we're just not geared up to be able to do a lot of that. So, um, please try to do the best you can to help your kids figure out uh, how to, you know, get onto Zoom and do this and do that with the, all the different things we're asking them to do. Uh, see if you can help them to do that yourself. Okay, sorry. Um, next one, test plan for our. Um, you know, science class, okay, this is both for chemistry and physical science. What we want to do is we want to give them a an assessment on Schoology multiple choice on Fridays from one to two. That's our, uh, our window of time that we would have our office hours for. And so we want to give an exam to them at that time. Now, this is a great opportunity uh, to, you know, use that asynchronous model to kind of synchronize everybody taking the test at the same time. So they need to be available from one to two to take their exam. We'll be able to watch them on Zoom as they take that exam on Schoology. And uh, the big advantage here is that this is very fair. It's a much more equitable way to do things because otherwise, if we have a kid taking an exam here in class on Monday, and then the other kids aren't having to take the class or take the test until uh, like Thursday, now you have a really big gap in the amount of time that this student has to study, four days extra to study compared to this student. We really didn't want that to be uh, a situation. We wanted to make sure that everybody had a good, fair opportunity to take it. And the other thing we wanted to think about is how can we maximize our class time, right? How can we make sure that we are doing as much instruction as possible? And let's be honest, if we can do something at home, like an exam, an assessment, and that can be something that is not really needing, you know, you don't have the teacher necessarily there to you know, work through every little bit. That's a better situation to have them do that at home and then have them here in the classroom where when they do need help figuring out a type of problem or answering a tough conceptual question, you have the teacher right here to do that. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that we could maximize the use of time in the classroom. And so we just felt that the exam was going to be a much better thing to have happen. Um, you know, at home when they had to be um, at home on Fridays. Um, so anyway, that's the way we're doing our tests in chemistry and physical science. All right, participation. One of the things we've increased our participation uh, points, we've decreased our test uh, points. So, um, you know, because of the online environment, we know that it can be difficult. Um, and so we said, you know what, let's try to, you know, bump up some points in the places where we can, where, you know, they got to log in every day and be there in front of the camera and sit there for all those hours. Uh, let's see if we can bump up some points, help them there. And then for our test points, let's just, you know, pull them down just a little bit. So we've knocked off about five percentage points off of the final exam and off the test and put in a 10% participation score, which we never have really done before. But we just wanted to try to accommodate the online environment and at least some way to try to boost some of those points for the kids that are trying, working hard, and you know, struggling a little bit on that. Next one, communication. Chris.powers at jeffco.k12.co.us. That's the email we want, um, I want you to communicate with me on. Um, the number of emails that we are getting um, <laughs> from all the different, different programs that we have and all the different submissions of this and that and the other, it's very overwhelming. Um, and so, you know, this is the best one because that's the one that, you know, kind of feeds in and, and has less of the junk mail <laughs> that we have to sort through. So I'm more likely to uh, respond to that one a little bit sooner. But also just remember that it is difficult uh, to get through the barrage of emails that we have. And so I'm going to try to get back to you as soon as I can 
as you email me. It does sometimes take a little bit longer than I would like it to, So, and I'm sure that you would like it to. So please be patient as we try to get to those emails as fast as we can, okay? And then uh, this last one, another interesting thing that we're doing. Again, for the remote environment, we're trying to accommodate some of the difficulties. So um, we're implementing a late pass um, this year, which is three late passes, basically, where if there's some sort of technological glitch or something where they're having trouble, um, they get an opportunity to just get, you know, 100% uh, still graded on that exam. In the past, we've done, you know, you get 20% off the first late thing, 50% off the second late thing, and then from that point on, you basically only get one point. Well, now we're going to say, hey, you can get three chances where it just is totally messed up and you couldn't get it in, but we're still going to give you 100% if you earn that. Um, and... However, if it goes beyond three, then you're just going to get a zero. Uh, again, one of the most difficult things that we're finding is, you know, trying to get late work graded. We don't even know when it gets turned in a lot of times. Um, and so what we need is we need in all caps, late pass, an email sent to this address. <laughs> and that email with all caps in the subject line will alert us, oh, wait, they're turning in something late that they didn't have turned in before. Um, then we can go back through and check it. And it just, it's an arduous, long process to go find that assignment, to grade it, to put it back in. Um, once you've gone through it all, it's just kind of crazy. So um, if you can please make sure that your kids do late pass in all caps in the subject line when they're turning in something late, then we can go back in and find it and get it graded. Um, but after they've done three of those, if that happens three times, hopefully it doesn't. Um, then from that point on, it's just going to be a zero. So tell them to be um, working ahead to get that stuff done, to make sure it's submitted on time, because if it's not, then if they have a technological glitch at the last second, instead of, you know, seeing it an hour or two hours before where they can kind of deal with it, then, you know, that's going to be tough on them. So have them work ahead of time just a little bit. Okay, so those are my hybrid addendum points. Um, and uh, hopefully... <laughs> With this learning experience that is going to be hybrid, um, you know, hopefully we can just kind of manage our way through the best that we can. Um, I'm excited to get kids in the classroom. Um, I love to have the kids in the classroom, and it's so hard to have them away. Um, so I can't wait to get some kids in the classroom and interact with them and help them to learn this material um, the best that they can and the best that I can teach them in the strange environment that we're in. So thank you so much for listening to this. I'm sorry, I'm a little, little, little rambling on. Um, hopefully you can see that we're going to have a lot of fun in here. Uh, we're going to cover a lot of material and learn a lot. Okay, thanks. Bye.